Hello and welcome to this video. Okay, so this is the second video in the series on this lecture. Um, in the last lecture, we talked about two systems. You have open loop systems and closed loop systems. Here, I've just simply drawn the simple um, or the, if you want, the typical diagram of an open loop system. So the upper diagram is what you have in an open loop system. You have your input, which we could call the set point or the reference. Um, those are names, names we often call it. That's the input to our system. You also have something called an input transducer. That's, the reason is that <clears throat> you need to take your input signal and convert it into a form that is usable by the system. We're in electrolyte, so in many cases, we are converting the input signal, which is of whatever form, into an electrical signal. But note that that is not always the case. It doesn't have to be an electrical signal. It could be a mechanical system, a signal, a pneumatic signal. It could even be, if you want, a bunch of numbers, a digital signal in all, a, a, a digital signal, a digital code, if you want. That goes into a controller, and then you may have some disturbance coming in. Um, it is, technically speaking, it's possible to have some disturbance coming in before the controller, but many times we often draw it this way. Then you have your plant or your process, which is the actual system we're trying to control. And then you have... Um, you may have some disturbance on this side. Notice, this, note that disturbance one, disturbance two don't have to be there, but then you may have them coming in, and then you have your control variable. Now we also mentioned that we have closed loop systems or feedback control systems. Now feedback systems, um, what simply the difference you have between open loop systems and closed loop systems is that fact that you have a feedback element. Now you have a transducer or a sensor or an instrumentation system of some sort that checks the control variable. That's the output takes a measurement of it or takes a sample of it, converts it into a form that can be used by the controller. So this is usually a summing junction. This is a summing junction. That's a summing junction. Now, um, your input transducer converts your reference into a signal. Your transducer that takes a measurement of the output con converts the signal, the output signal, into a similar signal as what you have from the input transducer so that literally this often is just a... This is just a summing junction. So you have this plus that or this minus that as the case may be. So that is typically what you have in here. Then that goes into the controller. Now, just to mention that even though this is a typical diagram of a closed loop system, your controller does not have to be in the forward path. Your controller could be in the feedback path, um, but I don't think we will deal with any system like that in this course. Mostly we'll just have the controller in the forward path. So just to make sure that we understand this, we'll go ahead and work with an example. So let's go ahead and look at a simple system. So for example, let's say we had a, a plant. The plant in this case is a car, and we want to control this car using this system, which is your controller. Now, to, um, this is a joystick, in case that's not obvious. This is a joystick. You know the way joysticks work. You can rotate them um, forward, backward, left, right or any other angle in between if you want. So let's take the forward back rotation. If you um, move this forward or move this backwards, that rotate this forward or rotate this backwards, the car will move forward or move back or stop as the case may be. So if it's moving forward, you rotate it backwards, that applies brakes, that's in, um, an acceleration in the negative direction, that's a deceleration and it comes to a stop or you could get it to reverse. Let's look at that system where we're trying to um, make it move forward or go backwards. Now, if you wanted to make it go forward and if you wanted to make it accelerate by a certain speed, what you will supply at the inputs will be an angular position. So you supply that angular position to this joystick. So for example, you rotate this forward. Uh, okay, sorry, let's have this. You could rotate this forward. Sorry, wrong one. Rotate this forward, say by, um, let me, let's you say 15 degrees. If you rotate this forward by 15 degrees, then the um, motor, the vehicle will start moving forward with a certain acceleration. If it were 20 degrees, the acceleration will be larger. If it were 30 degrees, the acceleration will be larger. Now, supplying a, an angular position as the input, the joystick takes that angular position and converts it into an electrical signal. So let's make an assumption that you have a wire connecting this joystick all the way to the car. Okay, so let's just make that assumption. Let's assume there's no wired system just to make things rather simple for this example. You have an angular position coming in here. Your joystick takes that angular position and converts it into a voltage signal or a current. A current or a voltage, depending on what you, what you, what you want to do. Let's say it converts it into a, uh, which will help us in this case, into a voltage signal. Say it converts it into a voltage signal. 
Now, what device can you think of that will convert a, an angular position into a voltage signal? Can you just think of one? If you want to pause the video at this point, I just try to think. You have dealt with a system like this at least in 310. It converts an angular position to a voltage signal. So in case you got that, or if you didn't get that, the answer to that, one answer to that will be a potentiometer. So a potentiometer, you could think of a potentiometer as a rotary device, or as a, so particularly I'm interested in the rotary potentiometer. And um, it, the rotary potentiometer, you effectively have a um, resistor that is in a circular form or a hemis, well, a circular form of sorts. And then you have a wiper that goes across the, um, the resistance so that the angle of the wiper determines the amount of resistance you have in there so that um, let's say you have this being your resistor if your wiper is at this position then you could say the angle between this point and zero is a certain angle and the resistance you get um, between the um, wiper and the other and your reference position the, dis the resistance you get between that is, is a function of your angle. So if you want, it's just simply k times the, your, your k times your resistance will give you, um, k times the angle will give the resistance that comes out, k times resistance times the angle times the resistance, whatever. You could, do the, you could do the math on that. So a simple potentiometer will work to convert an angular position into your voltage signal. Let's just, um, sorry, uh, undo this and let's go back just a little bit so we could, Take a look once again. Remember, you have a set point or a reference. In this case, our angular position. It goes into an input transducer. Okay, it goes into an input transducer. Input transducer. In this case, we've said we're using a joystick. Okay, input transducer joystick. Now, just to um, okay, so input transducer is the joystick. Now, just to kind of think a little, jog our memory just a little bit, or to think just a little bit. What is the plant we are trying to control in this case? So the plant is the car. I think that's quite obvious. We're trying to control the car. The output, what's our output or what's the controlled variable in this case? Now, that is not very obvious and that could be one of two things. It could be the velocity, it could be the acceleration, it could be the position. So depending on what you want, want it to be, in this case, let's call it um, the acceleration. Let's say we want the acceleration to be the control variable. Okay, so in this case, we'll use the acceleration of the car as our control variable. The car itself is the plant. Good, so we have that. Now, just coming back to this, what we're trying to do in this case is just basically run through this system using the particular example of a joystick and a car. So we've talked about a reference, which is our angular position, input transducer, joystick. Controller, we've not talked about that. Plant or process, that's the car. Control variable is our acceleration. What is the controller. So what is the controller? If we have a car, think of an RC car or of a, of an, of a, of a toy car that you want to control. You use a, a, a joystick to send an input that's been converted into a voltage signal. What do you think will get the car to move? It will be something that if you want is installed inside the car in this particular case. Um, oh, okay, let me see. It's, let's just say it's installed in the car to make life quite easy. What will that be? So for the car to move, I think it's quite obvious you want to have electric motors inside the car. So if you have electric motors inside the car, they have to move. Now, what is not very obvious, but which hopefully is obvious to you, is that um, for electric motors to move, the signal you get from a potentiometer typically is not large enough to drive an electric motor. Particularly the electric motor that will drive a vehicle. In fact, most electric motors, the signal you get from a potentiometer is not likely to be um, powerful enough to drive the motor. Very small motors, yes, they can drive them directly. If you want to drive a car, a toy car, or an, electric, or an actual electric vehicle, talking about a full-size sedan, you really definitely cannot drive them directly from a joystick. Instead, you need to have something in between. That something in between usually is a motor driver. And that effectively is just a power amplifier that, um, gi that gives out a large a signal with a very large power. It, you know, it's capable of giving, supplying a large current that the um, electric motor will use to move. So, in this case, um, we are trying to ask the question, what is the controller? Okay, what's the controller in our system? And we've said the, the plant is the car. The car being the plant 
has electric motors already. That is, the electric motor is part of the plant in this case. But between our input signal, the signal that is coming from our transducer, and the signal that is going into the motor, we need to have something, and in this case, we've called it a motor driver. So that motor driver will serve as our controller. Okay, the motor driver will serve as a, our controller. It takes our um, converted reference signal and converts it into a form that can drive the plant in the way it should. Now, I'm particularly going to first of all use the deal with the open loop system. Okay, so a simple open loop system, you press the joystick. Let's say you close your eyes and you press the joystick or you turn the joystick to a set, at, uh, rotate the joystick by a certain angle. We've said 15 degrees, for example. When you rotate it by a certain angle, 15 degrees, you expect the car to move with an acceleration of, let's say, 2 meters per second. Okay, now that is what's supposed to happen. And that is what, generally speaking, would happen, all things being equal. So, uh, sorry. Okay, yeah, so we have our joystick rotated by 15 degrees, and the car should move by 20 uh, by a, a, an acceleration or start increasing, start accelerating with two meters per second squared. I'm sorry, I said meters per second earlier. Let's say two meters per second squared now. That's the massive acceleration, but let's just forget about that for now. Two meters per second squared should be the acceleration. Now, that's a simple system, and let's assume that that works and that works perfectly well. Now, it's possible to have a disturbance somewhere. Let's say between the plant and our control variable, let's say we have a disturbance. What kind of disturbance can we have? Well, we have a disturbance here in this image. In this case, some rocks on the road or some stones on the road. The motor wants to move, but then this um, disturbance is along the way and it's just in front of the tire. Now, you know when you have, let's say you're driving a car and you had some stones on the way and you need to go over a curb or something. You know that it's, I think you know that you're going to have to supply more power to the car to make that happen. But let's forget about that for a moment. If we had an open loop system, supply 15 degrees, the car ought to move with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. But because of this disturbance, it will not move at that. In fact, it may not move at all. If there is no feedback, for example, if you are not looking and you're not, you've not noticed that the car is not moving, you will just expect that, okay, if I hold it at 15 degrees for a while, it will have accelerated with 2 meters per second squared for, say, 5 seconds. If I release the joystick, the speed should be, or the velocity should be so-so and so at this point in time. You could do the calculation. So-so and so at this point in time. So I will accelerate at 2 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. I expect that at the end of that, the car is moving at 10 meters per second, and I'll release the joystick. Now, because you are not looking, you don't realize that apparently the car hasn't moved at all. Now, on the other hand, let's say you were looking. You would know that something is going on. So if you were looking, then you would serve as your feedback loop because you are now the sensor checking the control variable to see whether or not that is actually happening. But let's say we had an automated system. Let's say you are not even in the loop. So you are not serving as the feedback control system. Let's say we had a closed loop control system. What can we use? What can we place inside the car? That or somewhere around the car that would monitor the control variable. Remember, control variable is the acceleration. What can we place around that will monitor the control variable? You could pause the video, think about that for a moment. So, there are a number of possibilities out there. Um, one example is using ultrasonic sensors on the outside, and they are constantly beaming um, ultrasonic signals at the car and based on checking for Doppler effect to see how fast it's accelerating or just measuring the position over time and to see um, how far it is accelerated. You could use uh, radar, you could use sonar, you could use so many things. But let's just say you have an optical encoder installed inside the wheels of the car. Now an optical encoder is a typical, is a, is a disc um, that has a number of slots. You shine a light through the slots and on the other hand you have something like a photodiode or a phototransistor that counts the number of um, beams of light or pulses of light that it receives. Based on those counts, you can tell how many counts it gets per second, and that way you can determine the um, velocity at the yeah the velocity of rotation of the wheel at any point in time. So you could use an optical encoder. So we have an optical encoder. We place that in the wheel. That closes the feedback loop. The optical encoder. We may have to now put some other circuitry somewhere here that will convert the signal, those pulses, into a voltage signal that is similar to what you had coming from your input transducer from the joystick. 
so that you can now subtract them and now send that directly to the controller. Controller, remember, is your um, is, is your motor driver. Okay, that's your controller. So that is a simple example of a control system that we could have. You had a joystick. Um, the angle, angular position you supply to the joystick is your reference. Joystick serves as your input transducer. You have some motor drivers that take your voltage signal that comes out of your joystick, sends them to the motors inside your car. Then you have a, an optical encoder connected to the wheel, and the optical encoder converts the signal back into an electrical form. And the difference between what you get from a joystick and from the optical encoder with some extra circuitry goes into your motor driver, and that closes the loop such that if the car is not moving and you supply a certain voltage signal, it, it, it senses that and it um, can amplify the, that difference. And based on that amplitude, your motor will probably get over the obstacle. It may not get over the obstacle. If the obstacle, imagine that your obstacle was not just a stone. Imagine that instead your obstacle was a brick wall. Okay? If your obstacle was a brick, brick wall, they just forget about it, really. There's no way you're going to be able to... Let's see, can I rotate this? Let's just say the obstacle is a brick wall. I mean, no matter the voltage you supply to the car, the, the worst, worst that will happen is that you just end up burning the motor and um, the car is still not moving anywhere. So the fact that you have a feedback loop does not mean that your system will always behave the way you want it to behave. However, feedback um, control um, gives us the best bet we have as to getting a system to work the way it should. Okay, so that'll be it for this video. See you in the next one.